Welcome, Pewter Report readers, listeners, and viewers to a Thursday night special edition of the Pewter Report podcast. We're always here Thursday nights, but tonight's really special because we have a special guest. We've had a couple Buccaneers on before. We've had Rashad White. We've had Cody Malk. We've had Luke Gedeke. Gosh, all these offensive guys. I'm a defensive guy here. What's what's going on? <laughs> um, but we're, we got another. We got the leader of the pack here. We've got. Bucks offensive coordinator Dave Canales joining us tonight. Uh, the Pewter Report podcast, as always, energized by Celsius, the official energy drink of Pewter Reports. Make Celsius your number one pick. And I just bought some new Oasis vibe today. It's fantastic. So uh, without uh, further ado, I'm Scott Reynolds, your host tonight, along with JC Allen from Pewter Report and yep, yep. joining us from his uh, new home in Tampa here is offensive coordinator uh, Dave Canales. How you doing, Dave? We got a frozen Dave Canales. We have a frozen Dave Canales, yes. We had some connectivity issues here, and uh, it looks like uh, Coach is trying to reconnect with us. Um, the, he's moving into a new house today, and he even agreed to to uh, join us on the podcast. We just spoke with him for a couple of minutes, and he's got 30 minutes uh, for us tonight, so we're excited to have him on once he reconnects. Um, in the meantime, though, you know, JC, Matt Matera and I, we, when we do the podcast on Mondays and Tuesdays, we always call Dave Canales the human Celsius, right? Yes. Like he's, he's the human version of Celsius. And uh, we certainly would be remiss if we didn't let everybody know that Celsius is the official energy drink of Peter Report. Maybe we can get Coach Canales' um, internet connection to maybe if you sprinkle some Celsius on it, it'll power yeah. up and, and work. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, folks, I just bought at uh, at uh, 7-Eleven three cans of the Oasis Vibe, Ooh. which is the new sparkling prickly pear and lime flavor. It's absolutely awesome. And I'm I actually think drinking the lemon lime right now. That's brand new as well. Exactly. So um, I believe we have Coach Canales joining us here. He's he's going mobile. So let's bring Coach back here. Coach, hey, how are you doing? Yes, I'm we got gotcha. you. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Just uh, moving into our new digs here and uh, just trying to figure out, you know, the best situation for getting uh, getting all this stuff. So exactly. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries at all. We're, we're excited to have you. We were just talking about how um, Matt Matera and I, we, we, you know, we, you don't have like a nickname. We haven't given you a nickname, but we do call you the human Celsius because you're full of energy, man. <laughs> You are all over the field. I don't know if you drink energy drinks or if you even have to, if it just comes naturally to you. You know, just coffee, good coffee in the morning. Um, but I have been on Celsius lately. Uh, oh, there we go. You're a Celsius man. Especially with the move. Uh, yes. Just un unpacking boxes, um, just making runs to the dump to get things out of the yep. house. So we've, we've been nonstop for the last couple of days. Well, that's um, that's great. I'm glad you're, you're a Celsius drinker. Just so you know, Dave, you just moved into that new house. If you, if you, if you find some flavors that you like, you can buy them in bulk. And on Amazon, use the subscribe and save to ship them right to your house. Uh, I, I I just got a, a case of orange today, which is one of my favorites. So just a little tip there, Coach. But we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us on the Peter Report podcast tonight. Um, can we dive into some questions? Can we talk a little football yeah. tonight? Okay. Oh, great. All right, uh, Coach. I think he froze up again. So live um, TV is things going to happen. Yep, uh, we had him for a second here. Let's let's see. He's he's in a brand new house. We know that, and he's looking for the best internet connection. Uh, it was working for a second. The, we're uh, we're just a minute away from talking about uh, the quarterback battle. Uh, you know the the use of play action this year. Uh, Todd Bowles working with him. So we're hopeful that Coach Canales can find that that sweet spot in the house. Until then, JC and I will will uh, will entertain you for uh, a couple of minutes here. Until Coach. Okay, let's try Coach and Alice one more time here. Hey, Coach, how are you? Coach, can you hear us? Coach, are you there? Buffering. We're buffering. Yep. Coach, can you hear us? <laughs> we got him back. We we got you back. Can you hear us? I think he's trying to find that right spot in his house that has the, the perfect cell signal. Coach, are you there? Can you hear us? I'm dancing around the house a little bit here, trying to find 
Good service. Find the best reception. Okay, can you hear us, Coach? I don't know if you can hear us, JC. You might want to text Coach and let him know that we can see him. I got I'm not it right sure now. if you can hear us. Okay. Maybe that'll pop up on a screen there. So bear with us tonight, folks. Sometimes this happens, uh, and certainly with Coach Canales moving into his uh, his new house, you know, it's it's understandable uh, that that where <laughs> Richard says that he moved into John Ledyard's old home. Uh, no, not to our knowledge. Um, but uh, listen, we were fortunate enough to get Coach even in the off season here because this is certainly during the the vacation time. We'll see if we can get him back here. All right, Coach, can you hear us now? Coach, can you hear us? Let's try one more time to okay. back out. Coach, can you hear us? We have Dave Canales on the program, folks. We're just trying to communicate with him and ask him some of the questions you guys want answered. Coach, can you hear us? As you can see, we're getting the tour of Coach Canales' new home. Beautiful. It looks like a new house. He's got plenty of room. A uh, couple stories. Some nice and, mahogany uh, beams. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He made a good choice. I'm just not sure if he made the right choice for internet providers, but we'll we'll <laughs> see if we can get spectrum. there. Yep. Oh, Coach, can you hear us? <laughs> Coach, can you hear us? Can hear the kids. Yeah. All right. He's going to try to back. Just text them. He's going to try to back out. Come okay. back in one more time. And we'll see if we can get him. If not, we might have to uh, try something else. Maybe we'll just get him audio instead of audio and video. Yeah. Uh, that sometimes works. Sometimes works better. Okay. Um, yeah. For sure. So we'll tr we'll try. We'll he's try certainly, something. He's this certainly is trying. Live. This is yeah. live TV, and we yeah. appreciate every minute he gives us trying to do this. So exactly. Okay. So let's let's bring him back in. Coach, can you hear us? Yeah, I think he froze up again. Coach, can you hear us now? I got you. You got me? Yes, yeah. we do. Okay, well, I just, I'm just i marching around the house right now. Okay. And I found a sweet spot right in the kitchen, so I'm just going to stand right here. That sounds Perfect. great. <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're going to fire up some questions here. Coach, we noticed okay. that, that uh, you know, when we watched, the media was only available to watch the Tuesday practices then in the mini camp. And we noticed that, that a lot of the throws, whether it was in the, the seven on sevens or the 11 on 11s, a lot of them went to the wide receivers instead of the tight ends. Was that due to play calling where the play was designed to target a wide receiver? Or was that just quarterbacks going through their progressions and finding the open guy who maybe happened to be a wide receiver? Yeah, just progression based, you know, and I think uh, you get one ball per play. So most of the plays are designed to start with. Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Mm -hmm. right. So if number one or is open in the progression, then the quarterback will take it, you know, and then um, there were their plays for Cade, you know, and, and the, I think the interesting part about the off season is if you're an X or Z or a Y, you have to picture whenever someone who plays behind me gets the ball, that's a target for me. Yeah. That ball was going towards me on this concept, you know? And so, um, cause it's just really hard to, you know, if the guys aren't out there the whole practice, it's hard to really like manufacture it given yeah. the defense is going to roll a dex coverages. At times right. too. Yeah. yeah. One of those things about calling those plays and going through possessions, uh, we noticed that a lot of the time and even coach Bowles talked about it, that you were out there live play calling. You weren't, didn't come up with some sort of practice routine that these are going to run to run these plays. Defense is going to run these plays. You guys are just out there throwing bullets live. How much of a benefit was that for you as a first-time play caller and also for the team to get to know the, the playbook? Oh, I need it. I needed it so bad. And um, the cool part was he was um, he was mixing up the situations, first and second down. Mm -hmm. um, he was mixing up when and where the third downs happened, uh, how much time was on the clock. We got a bunch of end-of-half, end-of-game work this spring, which I needed. I mean, it's hard. Yeah. It's like <laughs> I've been I've been the, the the voice in the sky for coordinators for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you feed them coverage, you feed them ideas. Hey, it's 45 seconds thinking time out next one. But to actually be coming up with what hash is it? What formation and play do I like? Yeah. You know, it's hard. And uh, and coach was great 
he just was like, you need this one again? Absolutely. Give it, give mm -hmm. me, I need another call up period. And unfortunately when you do that, it's harder for me to actually script when Chris is in on this place versus this coverage, let's right. throw this. Yeah. Um, so selfishly it works out good. And for the guys, they just kind of had to be patient and, yeah. and see, watch the film, see where they're at in the formation and see what we were trying to get done. Dave, do you envision in training camp that you'll be maybe doing a little bit more scripted work because you're going to have a lot more time, obviously you have a whole month really yeah. of practices. Uh, you'll still be doing some call-up periods, but yeah. uh, do you envision doing more of like a mix of both so you can yeah. you know, make sure that, that you get a look at certain guys who may be getting passed over, right? Um, yeah. Where you have to do some talent evaluation as well for receivers, tight ends, and backs. Yeah, and, and there'll be uh, – so likely what will happen is there'll be a situation of the day, and then coach will put put us in a first and second down compete or a third down blitz compete period mm -hmm. um, or red zone. And, um, you know, then they'll, some practices there'll be a natural, like, move the ball period that'll take up 20 to 30 plays where you're actually right. simulating a quarter of ball or something. But um, yeah, there'll be a good mix of those um, really important. The scripted period, really important for the run game. Yeah. Need, I need this one left. I need this one right, right. versus this front so that Tristan can get a good look at the front side, the back yeah. side, et cetera. Right. And now whose, whose idea was it to do these call it periods was was this something you were asking coach Bowles or, or did Todd say hey let's let's do this and help you really get a feel for that on the field on the sidelines call it like it's live type of environment yeah it was definitely driven by coach um and I think that was him just saying I know what this guy needs I yeah. remember you know he remembers being a first-time coordinator I just need to call it I just need to see what hash is it right. where am I at in the field you know and so he knew that. And then he just kind of approached me and like some of those days when you are calling it, um, you have to be very conscious of the rep count for guys. Yeah. And that was one of the things that coming in, one of the conversations that coach Bowles and I had was let's be really intentional and smart about the load we put on our players. We're going to yeah. ask them to go full speed and trust us. Let's be smart about how we do that. Um, and so, you know, just kind of working together on those and saying, hey, I think the guys have had two good days of work. Yeah. Let's script it tomorrow so we can slow it down, substitute, and be be really um, intentional with the reps. Now, when you're when you're calling plays in the season, are you going to do it from the uh, sideline or do you plan on being up in the booth? What, what are you, What's your game plan for attack there? Yeah, definitely sideline. I'm going to be really heavily involved with the quarterback, um, especially year one. And – Thad's doing a fantastic job, not a knock on him. I just, I know what I want, what I need to get out of our quarterbacks. Mm. So uh, being down there, being able to watch the, the series with those guys from the bench, um, being able to make those adjustments and also just get a feel for who these guys are under live stress because personalities come out, guys respond to stress in different ways mm -hmm. um, and just being able to understand what they need from me to help them get back focused get back on track and then take the next series. Um, all that's going to be really important for me to be down there. You know, coach in watching you out there at uh, even the rookie mini camp running around with quarterbacks Everywhere. that, that weren't going to be on your team, but, but yeah. giving those guys a couple of days of Dave Canales, right. And, yeah. and, and the full on coaching that, you know, that, that you're going to do. I've just been so impressed with how hands-on you are. Here you're an offensive coordinator and you're you're the guy, not some lackey, not some, you know, assistant out there or some uh, offensive quality control guy, you know, moving the nets and 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 getting the drills positioned, the, you know, the the way that that you want them to be. Um you know, I I you you've probably heard the term working manager before. And I I wrote about this in my last uh, column about how you're a working manager. Working manager at a restaurant is is not the guy that sits in his office and delegates and barks out orders. He's the guy that that when the hostess is busy seating people, you know, he's taking the next group over to the table and he's busting the tables when all the bus boys and and girls are out there, you know, cleaning off tables. Uh, you like to be hands on, like that that that's part of your coaching style, right? Oh, absolutely, and. Um... You know, my dad's a pastor um, of a church in Los Angeles. He retired. My older brother took over. And uh, the messaging we always got was it's, it's you know, he'd walk around and you'd see him. He'd pick up the trash. You know, yeah. he'd, um, 
he'd empty a can out. Um, and he would always say, never ask somebody to do something you wouldn't do. And so a lot of what we're doing, what I'm doing right now is I'm teaching our equipment guys. Here's where I want this for this drill. Mm -hmm. Here's how I would like this. I'm teaching Thad. Yeah. Here's how we do this. Here's how we present this drill to them, give them different visual stimuli. Um, so I'm training him, I'm training Jordan Somerville, who's our assistant quarterbacks coach. Right. Here's how I want these things done, guys, because as the mm -hmm. season goes, I may need to be with the tight ends for a period or be with the yeah. O-line for a period. Um, yeah. So really just kind of modeling it early on. And then, um, you know, my intent and my goal is to be able to let go of all of it and delegate all of it. Yeah. And where where the guys run the drills, the guys do all the coaching, and then I it'll free me up to kind of bounce around and, and yeah. just be an asset um, for the coaching staff. But I appreciate the uh, the compliment. I, I think it's something that, you know, came natural to just starting my, you know, 23 years old, head coach of a JV team. Yeah. And you did everything. Right. And you, <laughs> you were the strength staff. You were the athletic trainer and the equipment manager and the offensive and defensive coordinator. And so just kind of, I love it. And, you know, I, I think, you know, if I'm ever lucky enough to get to a point as a coordinator where I can just step back and start moving around, I yeah. think I'm going to get a little bit antsy during those drills where I'm not <laughs> picking a bag. And I know Pete right. does. And he sometimes, you know, Pete would cut a drill off short because he just like, I'm not doing anything. Right. Okay, that's enough, guys. Let's go to team. You know, I right. need to be involved. So, yeah. Well, it kind of leads into my next question. That was yeah. kind of follow up with that how did you kind of develop your coaching style obviously you hear some of these guys have glowing reviews about the energy you bring uh, as scott just said we've seen not only with the quarterbacks but bouncing to the tight ends and the offensive line and the and the wide receivers you're literally with every offensive position group the running backs and and, and showing them and teaching them and, and that's something chris godwin said is you're not going to cuss guys out you're going right. to you're going to teach them you're going to help them understand the why they're doing things i mean the super chat we have here uh, thank you, Board Burns. Kind of goes with that your leadership style, you know, and how you hold players accountable. Um, where did you? De how did that develop? How did? Where did that come from? Yeah, I've had some great mentors. Um, you know, when I uh, when I got to the junior college level, a guy named John Featherstone, rest in peace. Um, he was a Southern California junior college legend. And by the time I got to El Camino College, he had already been there twenty seven or twenty eight years. And he would start off every practice with uh, quick calisthenics, quick gals. So it was like a dynamic warm up, mm -hmm. and they would start clapping and they, he would kind of ramp it up and ramp it up, but he wouldn't start a practice until the energy was right. Interesting. So right off the bat, you know, I get this dose of, the, here's a guy who, regardless of what plays we practice today, if the energy isn't right, yeah. guys, why are we mm -hmm. here? Right. right. Then yeah. I go to Pete and Pete would always say, you know, talk to the staff, you know, he talked to reporters or whatever. And he would say, at the end of the day, guys, if we're not having fun, what are we doing? Right. I just, maybe other coaches can do it and they love it that way. Love, you know, misery loves company or whatever that is. But <laughs> in Seattle at yeah. USC, um, even at the junior college before that, you know, it was, I was modeled. This should be fun. Yeah. Um, and picture it was you playing or picture right. my son, Ben, who's 11. Mm -hmm. how would I want him to be treated rookie mini camp quarterback may never even get a shot at training camp, but he's right. there. How would I want him to be treated? I would want him to leave after three days better. Yeah. And okay. so, you know, that was just kind of like every day is important. Um, Bill Walsh to coach Carroll to all of us who have been with him, any practice, if you had one rep, for one guy to get this one technique right and you nailed it, the whole day was a success. So it could be, for example, uh, one of the days it was Kate Otten on the backside of the run game, chop and rip. Mm -hmm. We need to look just like the keeper game, the boots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we fashioned it so that he had a six technique defensive end. We're running the ball to the left. He's on the backside. And he nailed it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, another day it was a choice route. It was for Kyle Trask, and it was a it was choice routes. Just reading it and seeing the inside and outside defender. So we mm -hmm. did individual drills. 
for six, seven minutes, which is a long time, an yeah. individual, just to refine his eyes on choice. Mm-hmm. Then he goes into the practice, rips one right on time with the right footwork. And it's like, I don't even know what else happened that day, but <laughs> he got better on choice route. Right. And it was a right. success. So, yeah. Uh, how many choice routes are, is, is that a big part of your passing game? Is, is, is that yeah. like a staple? you know, in there where oh, you're yeah. giving quarterbacks and receivers and they got to be on the same page too. That's where that chemistry comes in. Cause if, if they're reading coverage differently, all of a sudden the ball goes one way, the receiver goes the other. And sometimes that ball goes in the hands of a DB instead. Yeah. And I think it's, um, I think that they're expensive plays, uh, the choice. So you have to practice it a lot for the few times you need it. Yeah. When does it come up third down critical situations? Um, so you practice so much. It's, it may, I don't know. I haven't counted it exactly, but I bet it's probably somewhere like 12 or 15 to one Mm -hmm. practice to called where some of the other concepts that are fixed, they may be like two to one, three to one, you know, cause it's a fixed trajectory. You know, he's going out or, you know, he's going in, um, where the choice route does require a lot of work, yeah. um, but it's valuable with the tight ends, the running backs, and the wide receivers. Yeah, and and kind of going with that play action, something that you're yes. that you're big on, right? Yeah. Um, and and it certainly works. That's really where a lot of the big plays down the field work for you guys, yeah. the deep shots. And what I love about your offense, from what I've seen so far, and what what we watched in Seattle is is it's horizontal based, right? And that you yes. want you want the defense to have to spread out and go one way, and the quarterback goes the other. A lot of misdirection, yeah. and the eye candy to to get because every time the defensive players are going sideways, they're not going forward and attacking oh, right. line of scrimmage, right? Correct. And so th- there's there's a lot of genius to that, but you also have that vertical deep element as well. So yes, uh, it, do you you feel like like this type of offense is multi dimensional because it's not just vertical based that it has that horizontal element too, that, that really causes a lot of confusion for defenses. Yeah. I think it's like you said, eye candy. A lot of that is just to slow down um, linebacker and safety run fits. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you, if you line up under center and you say set hut linebackers can just fly into their gap and fit oh, yeah. it. But if you, if you put an extra guy in the backfield or you fly motion or you move a receiver, their gaps change right. with every body that changes. Yeah. Um, and so if they have just a slight element of hesitation before they fit a gap, it allows our combos to be that much cleaner. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and then like, just like with, with the boot game, um, you know, I, t- I tell my guys, like, if you have a guy open in the flat, just take it. He may yeah. get two yards, but guess what? All 11 on defense have to redirect from where they were Right. Chase flat to the other side of the field and try to, you know, try to make the tackle. If the guy gets eight or nine, you may have eight or nine guys chasing them down the field that far. Right. Do that a couple of times. I mean, you guys remember <laughs> doing those, you know, gassers type of conditioning, oh, yeah. whether, whether oh, yeah. it was baseball or basketball or football. Right. Do that a few times and then try <laughs> doing your assignment and all that. So it just kind of takes right. its toll you know, right. over the course of the it's game. Interesting. Yeah. And, and one more thing on play action and JC's got some more questions yeah. here. Uh, w- philosophically speaking, what percentage of the time do you like to use play action? Honestly, I would say you're going to probably get three to five great play action shots a game. Mm-hmm. That's out of 60 some odd plays. Yeah. Right. So it's not that much, but you're waiting for the right opportunity. You're waiting for them to put their gloves down. Yeah. And then it's like the knockout punch. Right. And like you think about a boxing match. And that's what I always say about Russell. He was such a heavyweight fighter because mm-hmm. he was so patient. He was so patient. And then he would run. And they're like, why is he running all the time? Why? It's because he didn't get the right look. And then they would be flat footed in safety. And he would right. launch it to Tyler or to DK yeah. for a 60 yard, 40 yard, 35 yard bomb. Right. And it was like a, like a heavyweight fight. How yeah. many real knockout punches happen? Three to five? Yeah. It's, about it's not haymaker after haymaker. It's like you're right. on the card, you're on the card, you're on the card. He made a mistake. Boom, he goes to the ground. Did he get up? Right. Right. You know, so that's that's the feel of it. Um mm-hmm. that's the that's the why behind the tempo. That's the why behind um just the run game. 
you know, yeah. and, and being able to play to our strengths, keep the defense on the sideline, let them rest. We're running keep the ball. Your defense on the sidelines. Right? Yes. That's music to the ball. both ears. <laughs> it's quick <laughs> completions. Yeah. You know, it's quick completion. Don't get tired. Throw that flat again. Right. Throw that flat again. The clock's ticking. The defense is sitting there. The runs slowly. Okay. They're starting to inch up. Mm -hmm. Somebody tell me, okay, they're, we're ready. And then boom, you try to yep. hit them that way. So as far as, you know, with your offense, uh, there's play action, a lot of pre-snap movement we've seen so far, uh, guys, and you mentioned it, you know, putting them in, it's, it's a different change the defense has to account for and has to set a different way. How much are you going to use that, that uh, pre-snap motion uh, when the regular season comes? And not only that, um, as well as pre-snap motion, you just kind of mentioned up tempo. Uh, what what do you? How much? How often do you plan on? Obviously, games will dictate that. But is that going to be a big part of your playbook as far as pre-snap, up tempo, yeah. play action, and just your offensive yeah. philosophy overall? Yeah, tempo will always be a big part of it. Um, and the reason is is it's just uh, it reduces the defense to what they can do. Yeah, they just can't get to really specific calls right. when you know you're right on the ball you're right out right back on the ball in 12 personnel or 11 whether it's first to second or second to third especially second to third where a lot of times they'll do a full hockey sub line you know right. and bring the big boys out yeah. the fast guys out there plus mm -hmm. two more dbs all right so all you got to do is catch them once and they're in their basic package you're running a simple play versus a simple coverage makes yeah. football easier for your quarterback, makes it easier for the skill players. And then if you catch them off guard one time and they're trying to sub, yeah, you can take advantage of free plays, snap it while they're trying to get off or on the field. Right. It happens every once in a while. It doesn't happen a lot because they'll usually hold the subs. They see us going fast. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it just keeps them from being really um, tailor-made to what you're trying to do. So it gets right. them out of – you know, and their players are studying these reports and they said when this formation comes and the guy is six inches outside the numbers and the tight end is off and the back's looking to the left, it's this play. Yeah. They can't do that. Right. right. If you go fast. If you go fast, they're just like, Hold on, what did you say? What was the call again? Said hi. Yeah. You know, and so you take yeah. them out of player's mind. Yeah, that's good stuff. Coach, we would be remiss if, if we didn't ask you about the quarterbacks here. Now that you've had an yeah. off season to work, to work with Baker and Kyle. And I understand, I, I understand both sides, but I understand picking a guy now and getting him all the reps, right. And, and yeah. getting him ready at the same time, what you said in the press conference, where we're not going to rehash it here because you did a great job explaining it before. And certainly it worked, right. You took that quarterback competition all the way to the end, right. Of, of training camp last year at the yeah. preseason. And, and it worked. You guys became a playoff team. Geno Smith was more than prepared for the, those reps, he became the, a, a pro bowler for the first time and the NFL comeback player of the year throwing for 4,000 yards, right? So right. so based on last year, I'm not concerned at all about this quarterback battle going right. deep because you've seen it work before. And I think Buccaneer fans should take heed of that. But what have you seen from Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask in terms of what is Baker's strength and weakness right now? And what is Kyle's strength and weakness? Understanding that that any perceived weakness can be improved and, and turned into a strength sure. during training camp in the preseason. Sure. But what, what, what do you see from both quarterbacks in that perspective right now? Well, I think that, you know, one of the things that would be really obvious to, you know, Bucks fans and, and, and everybody, um, everybody else just kind of watching from the outside in is, is Baker's got way more game time experience. So you see like the comfort level that he has, in the huddle with the guys, um, there's some really cool just leadership stuff coming out of him and um, his ability to do that. He's done it for so long. Yeah. Um, and uh, then he's got some familiar familiarity in the system coming from L.A. Right. So some of that was was pretty fluid. And then um, one of the things that just jumped off right right away is just his ability to throw the ball down the field mm -hmm. um, to – you know, just to anybody really, but like putting the ball in a catchable place down the field, I was like, Oh, this is cool. I'm used to this, <laughs> right. you know, whether it was Russell or Gino, you know, yeah. I'm used to this guy being able to, you know, launch it. Um, right. I think one of the things that Baker has also brought is just kind of that ability to know when to fold him. Yeah. Um, right. And say, you know, this is not the coverage for this play. 
get it down quick, get it out next mm-hmm. play. Yeah. Um, you know, I think where break where Baker can improve is just his specific footwork and timing for the different concepts as he gets to learn, because while we, while we learned so much football from Sean McVay and the Rams through mm-hmm. Shane in Seattle, a lot of our past game was built and designed around Russell and carried over because they had answers, you know, so right. we learned our answers that way. So there's some things that Baker's still learning that he likes. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're working on those things. And um, then about far, Kyle. Yeah. And then as far as Kyle goes, I think one of the coolest things that popped for me was his ability to see the vertical seams um, on, you know, just all go four mm-hmm. verts, two by two, three by one, empty you know with some with some end of the game situations his right. ability to kind of see like where's the defender at on this guy running vertical mm-hmm. um and layer the ball um put it on his back shoulder the guy crossed his face you know throwing it lower um he just had all kinds of cool throws in between the numbers yeah so yes. and i think you know probably one of the cool things was just like Hey, I had a lot of six, five quarterbacks, you know, so like <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's like, there's some different voids that he can take advantage of and see being that tall. Yeah. Um, I was presently, I was pleasantly surprised by his mobility mm-hmm. in the boot game, yeah. being able to pull up when he's has a dirty edge. That's just, you know, if you have a pressure or yep. a defensive end plays out of it, he's in your lap. Right. Um, to watch him be able to, twitch up, find a platform and find a completion or throw it away. Like th- those are some of the things I didn't know what I was getting right. um, with him, but he handled it great. And we drilled the heck out of it. I mean, if you've been to any practices, we're always oh, yeah. drilling a keeper. Yes. Um, <laughs> but so that was really cool to see that. Um, and I think for Kyle, um, you know, some of the places where he can continue to grow is, is just his level of comfort with all the plays, all this new terminology, being in the huddle with the guys, he's got great command, but he doesn't quite have that level of comfort to just like, I got this, Yeah, you know, right. he's still, he's still working on it. He's still working on, okay, now I got the play. I know what I'm doing. I know what my progression is. What's my footwork again. So it's like just piecing all those things together, but you can yeah. see the talent. You can see why they took him in the second round mm-hmm. with some of the special throws that he's had um, yeah. throughout this camp. And then as far he's not in the quarterback competition, but just John Wolford, what he's brought in coming, running a similar offense for years uh, with Sean McVay, obviously an incredible tool to help these guys learn, you know, most part of your system. And also someone familiar that Baker has, you know, shared a locker room with. Oh, yeah. John's fantastic. He's for sure, hands down, the smartest guy in the room. It's not even close. Like, he's like reminders. He's like, he's funny. Um, mm-hmm. He's just constant just i don't know i just love i love being around him i've heard i heard great things about him um through shane and so when we had an opportunity to bring him in he and i had a great conversation and he came in and he's killed it he's like our uh i call him the sandman because he's our closer so he gets like the last two or three reps right you know of a period yeah and he just comes in there and dials it up just he like, does and where that's a great throw he, he, he's and, not even oh, like just a regular like you know typical number three third string quarterback i mean right. this guy can play he can throw the ball he's fearless he's fantastic. yeah he really is he's fantastic and i think one of the coolest things to me is a great feeling for a quarterback coach or an offensive coordinator is when you know before the play starts where the ball should go yeah and it goes there that's john wolford yeah. like he's nice. just like all right so this ball should go to the back line right here and there it is bang perfect yeah. Great job, John. Like, it's just, um, we have a good room and yeah. the, the chemistry is great. Um, I try to create an environment where it's like, guys, we're helping each other. If we help mm-hmm. all of us, we're all going to be better off at the end of this year. So, um, you know, it's been a really good group. It, it's all going to come down to who doesn't turn the ball over more, right? That's it. I mean, it, it really is. They, like, and, and that's why Kyle, despite his lack of experience, he has a chance in this, right? If Baker... right. If Baker starts throwing picks in training camp in the preseason and Kyle is moving this team and putting points on the board and he's staying away from turnovers, 
Like that's that's the ticket to the job, right? Is whoever doesn't turn yeah. the ball over the most. Right. And, and I mean, so that's one way of looking at it. And then the <laughs> other way, the other way of looking at it is this. These guys both play absolutely lights out. They play out of their mind. Yeah. We're talking like 80% completion in right. training camp, preseason, and they're just ripping it. And, and neither one of them the, turns it over, right? And none of them turn it over. And right. who has the most explosive plays? Yeah. So right. then that guy will get the job. Whoever throws the most touchdowns, that guy gets the job. Right. But no, no, you're absolutely right. I just, I, I just, but it's, it's because, um, not that Russell was ever competing for his job, but yeah. like when Gino was playing behind him, Gino was in the high seventies, eighties, completing mm-hmm. the ball, and he was throwing the ball down the field and Russ would have slight edge because you throw a few more touchdowns. And it right. was like, here's two guys playing ball the right way. Yeah. One right. guy knows these players, the starters a little bit better. He's getting a few more touchdowns. And it's like, that's my highest hope is yeah. I can create two guys who are playing their butts off. Right. And somebody is just, just took, took the keys and said, I'm driving the car. Yeah. Right. You know, All right. Um, Coach Bowles was was kind enough to to give us some names of guys to watch that he's really excited about. Some yeah. kind of like um, you know sleeper guys or unheralded guys. Um, he was talking about Keenan Isaac, the the big rookie cornerback from Alabama yeah. State, uh, who has really been causing some problems for you guys on on offense, yeah. as well as Marquise Watts, who's kind of an underrated, undrafted free agent, edge rusher, number fifty eight. Um, how about in your side of the ball? Who are some of the guys that really have maybe surprised you? Uh, I know that Rashad White, we haven't even seen Sean Tucker yet, but Rashad yeah. White says you guys were already calling him baby Nick Chubb. Who are some of the guys in, in your side of the ball that that have impressed you that you're anxious to see them in pads? Maybe not the Mike Evans and the yeah. Chris Godwins. We know about sure. those guys, but some of the other guys. Yeah. Well, I think just, you know, talking about Rashad really quick, just I, did, I didn't realize how natural he was at everything. So he's, um, you know, out being around Marshawn, like Marshawn would come out there and run, you know, skinny posts and outs in pregame every once in a while. Yeah. And just to kind of like sharpen his, his route tree. Um, and you just watch his flexibility. It's, it, he tracks it, catches it easy, and you just go, wow. If he wanted to be a receiver, like he could, he could <laughs> slim down or not and right. probably be a receiver here too. Mm, um, wow. But Rashad, just, just his feel in the screen game, his patience in the run game, um, the natural ability, the way he catches the ball down the field, short. Uh, he's got wiggle at the top. Um, I don't know. I just think he's. I think he's a fantastic talent. Um, and then Keyshawn Vaughn. You know, he's like yeah. he can run all the runs. Like if you were to say yeah. all the different styles of runs we've thrown at these guys this spring, he just knew how to do all the footwork right. He was right. patient, first puller, second puller. Um, he'd let the combos develop for him. Um, the gun runs, he was fantastic, you know, and then, um, and he cut the ball well too, out of the backfield. Yeah. So he's really, uh, really excited about the yeah. yeah. And then it was great to see chase, uh, chase Edmonds at the end, um, to see him. He's just like lightning in a bottle and he's, a, yeah. he's like, like Rashad, he's very versatile and he can do a lot of things. And, um, so I'm excited about the running back group for sure. And then, um, as far as the receivers goes, um, you know, Trey Palmer, you see the speed, it's real. Oh, yeah. um, being able to track it down the field, separate versus man to man. Rakim Jarrett, um, you yeah. know, he gets faster with the ball in his hands. Mm-hmm. And his route tree needs to be developed. But on any given route, you see him once he catches it, he has this acceleration. And he turns into like a different player with the ball in his hands. It was fantastic. Right. Um, Devin Tompkins, man, he had some sweet routes this spring and then had a little bit um, of an injury that he had to, to come back. But you talk about just like explosive. Um, Kalen Geiger, um, just looking for that slot, that receiver that can play inside, separate on choice routes. Mm-hmm. He can do that. You know? Yeah. Um, I was really excited to see Russell a little bit more, but I've seen enough of Russ and I'm excited about what he can do for us too. Yeah. Um, and then, um, and then Payne Durham and Tanner Taula, those two yeah. trees, those two massive <laughs> men tied yes. in. Um, and both of those guys just having feel front side, backside of runs, the ability to stick it 
stick their foot in the ground and separate, you know, tight ends are usually covered uh, just based on being covered by DBs. They're usually yeah. covered, but it's the ones who can kind of twitch up at the top and separate. Mm. Um, they have that knack to yeah. be able to do that. And, um, and I just had a lot of fun, like, you know, you guys know Cade, but I had a lot of fun with Co just putting him in different spots Yeah, and uh, the different things he can do is pretty rare. Um, knowing that we don't have the traditional fullback on our roster, but he can do all those things plus right, play right. in line. Um, so, you know, I, I can go on and on, but the offensive line, you know, I think, <laughs> I think, um, you know, I say this in my 13 years in Seattle, you know, this line that we're assembling right now with Ryan Jensen and Cody at, at right guard, it'd be the best offensive line that I've been around player for player. Wow. Really? So, and we had some pretty good ones in Seattle, but this yeah. one is, is really special. Uh, yeah. That's kind of my next question is about the offensive line. Obviously, we know the um, you know it's been no secret about the offensive line. Russell voicing his dispress, displeasure in the past about it. This offensive line's already got an, two all uh, Pro Bowlers, two all Pro on there. Even though he's making a position switch, for whatever reason though, in Seattle, you guys are still able to move the ball um, and gain at least four yards per carry. We're in the top ten in rushing yards uh, per year multiple times. Just what about this offense? What about the style? What about we know you're 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 gonna marry the, the pass and the run game, but just speaking to that run running game, that running style, what allowed you to continue to just year after year churn out over four yards per carry, um, no matter what the offensive line looked like in front of you guys? And last year it, it was rookies. Yeah. It was belief. Um mm-hmm. and I don't think our O lines were ever as bad as you know, some people might have made, try to make them seem that they were. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to give to give them the benefit of the doubt there, but um, but it's the system. You know, it was uh, it was belief in the run game. You run mm-hmm. to win. You play great defense, um, and everything comes off of it. And uh, so the drill work. You know, having having really just amazing. You know, Tom Cable um, and a bunch of great assistants who end up who are O line coaches now in the league across yeah. the league. They did a fantastic job of drilling these guys um, on all the little details. The whole, just the whole individual drill work is a system in and of itself for the offensive line. And so that was like, a, you know, a tip of the cap to the wide zone guys and knowing how to do it and plan it that way. Um, and then sticking with it and not giving up on, um, not giving up on the run game, not saying, yeah. well, hey, they're going for ones and twos, guys. I guess we're just going to have to throw today. You know, right. it's like, no, we'll come around to it. So I love to tell mm-hmm. this story because in 2017, we had a couple injuries. Um, we were turning the roster over in Seattle and mm-hmm. our offensive line was, we had to kind of mix and match it and, mm-hmm. you know, some patchwork going there. We struggled to run the ball and to their credit, we were still in the top five in explosive passes that year. So yeah. <laughs> we ran just enough for the guys to get to what they were good at. They could pass pro. So yeah. they'd hold up. We'd still throw the ball down the field. Um, they allowed us to get it out in, in a good, in a you know, decent amount of time, and just finding out what their strengths were and what worked for them. Yeah. Um, but like you know, just figuring it out as a staff, figuring it out you know as far as who our players were and what they allow us to do, um, and hopefully we'll do the same thing here. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll play to the strengths. We have a massive left side, guys. Yeah. Okay. Massive. <laughs> oh, yeah. And our right side, nobody's. Yeah faster and angrier than our right side and nobody is redder <laughs> in the middle so that's got true some really cool parts of our um, of our line that i'm excited about yep coach uh we we really appreciate your time tonight we've gone a little little over time just because it's been so much fun it just looked at the clock you know um well you, i owed you, you too man i'm dancing around the house trying to find a good wife <laughs> well we had an audible we got to the right everywhere. play trying yeah to, trying to hide a little bit of the uh the chaos uh, well, yeah right. yeah we, we saw it's a beautiful home so yeah we, we audible we got to the right play we got you here coach if we could jc's got one more question then i've got one more and then we'll, we'll let Great. you get out of here is that okay yeah all right jc awesome. take it away yeah so my question really is um You've talked about, you know, top five and explosive plays. You've used other stats in, in this um, in this interview so far as well. How much do analytics and stats, EPA, um, you know, all these different new age time of analytics, how much do they play into your game as an offensive coordinator? How much do you rely on them and utilize them to go out and make, yeah. you know, choices when you're calling plays? Yeah. Say hi to my wife, by the way. There's Lizzie. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, Lizzie. How are you? 
<laughs> um, we'll come so help yeah, you. Let's analytics, yeah. analytics, big. So um, if you're not using advanced stats and analytics, you're missing it. And we have some great stuff from our video department. Mm -hmm. um, and from we don't have an analytics department, but we have groups of people in scouting and groups of people in video that provide us with these stats that we know what we're looking for. So we ask mm -hmm. for and they come with the cut up. They come with video that you can see this evidence. But what it does, right. same thing with the combine, it allows you to cover the outliers really quickly. Mm -hmm. So it shows you this is really good. This is really bad. Yeah. Okay. The part in the middle is where it doesn't help you as much because yeah. that's the part that's like, hey, these are all about average numbers. You yeah. got to dig in, watch the film, decide what's best decide mm -hmm. what to do and what to stay away from. But it's those outliers of say, for example, let's just say 11 personnel shotgun runs are averaging 1.6 yards per carry against this defense. Right. Hey guys, we're not stay running away 11 from personnel yeah. shotgun <laughs> runs this week. Right. <laughs> 12 personnel play action is averaging 14.2 yards per play. Okay, guys, yeah. hey, we're going to have 12 personnel play actions. You know, like <laughs> right. there's some things that you can like, Yeah, you can go right to that analytics helps you. It's the same thing with, with the uh, scouting evaluation process. Yeah. They allow you to see like these metrics make these guys fall into a category of, oh, yeah, these players have been successful or these players have historically not been successful unless you're looking for the diamond in the rough. Right. You know, and you just have a great feel for this receiver who runs four seven. He's yeah. gonna be a player. Well, then you better know that. You know, now you gotta really do the homework and see, but at least it gives you like a starting point. Right. And that goes hand in hand with scheming guys each week and each out for different opponents. You study your opponent, yeah, you and then you can scheme these guys a certain way, and that data goes hand in hand with with um, you know, assembling your, your playbook and your play sheet for the week. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Areas of the field, quarter, hash sometimes yeah. matters um, for the play for the defensive play caller. Yeah. Clock running, clock stop, um, tempo, right? What is he doing? Tempo. What is he doing? Tempo in this personnel. How about this one? How about this one? Right. Um, so all of those things will pop for you on a report, given that, you know, PFF does a fantastic job of putting all this data in and feeding it to us. And they, they came and visited with this and were like, really the only limitation is your imagination. Right. So like, yeah. <laughs> if you guys think of something we don't have or we're not tracking right now, tell us and we'll get it built. And that's been yeah. true for the last, you know, six or seven years that we've been really dialing into what they can do and, and, and um, kicking the tires on PFF and what they can spit yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. That's great awesome. stuff. I, I I know one of the stats that usually uh, works out well in the Bucks' favor, and that's when Mike Evans scores touchdowns. It's a good thing, right? <laughs> hey, well, let's and do um, that. yeah, let's do that, right? Let's do that a lot. So Mike Evans came in as as a rookie and set the franchise single season record with twelve back in 2014. Then he tied that a couple years later in his first Pro Bowl season. Then he beat that record. In 2013, or I should say 2020, winning the Super Bowl with 13 touchdowns. Then he beat it again in 2021 <laughs> with 14 touchdowns. And Mike's a big guy, 6'5". He can get down the field. Just ask, you know, Jalen Ramsey. Um, you know, he averages 15 yards per catch. He's, he's a big X receiver. You know, you like those kind of guys. But right. he does so much damage in and around the goal line. He has so many touchdowns from inside the five yard line, whether it's it's yeah. a, a big wide receiver screen on the two yard line where he catches the ball and literally falls forward when he's six five and scores a touchdown, or you can see the fade here. That was in week one uh, against uh, Diggs, who's a, a damn good corner back there in uh, in Dallas. Um, I got to think that for whatever reason, I don't know why uh, Tom Brady, Byron Leftwich went away from it last year, but that was last year. I got to think that you're salivating to use a big time red zone weapon right. like that, not even in the 20 yard uh, line in, but in the five yard line in. Right. Oh, absolutely. And so, and that's, you know, that was like week one or week two on the job. Brad and I flew out, 
sat down. Okay, let's watch like the last five or six years of Mike Evans, Chris mm-hmm. Godwin, and let's just like start just putting our wrapping our brains around how to use these guys. Um, and then after that, we just you know couldn't help it, so we just said, now let's just watch all career touchdowns. <laughs> by Mike Evans. Yeah, so back uh, shoulder. So, yeah. Those are fun. Those are fun projects. Um, yeah. You know, and so again that's the starting point, you know, like you, you, you start your passing game, number one in progression. Mm -hmm. Where's Mike? Where's Chris? Yeah. Everybody else will get their touches. It's happened for years that way. Right. Um, But that's the way you have to build it, you know? Um, And, uh, and if the defense cooperates, that ball will go there a lot, you know, there's some different things in different ways that we can try to ensure number one progression gets the ball, you know, without giving too much information, but like, you know, there's just things you can do. You yeah. know, to to where he's not just st- sitting, you know, on the single side of a three by one formation at X, you right. know, and and expecting him to just physically win all the time. You know, there's yeah. things you can do. So it's funny you said to Rashad White. Uh, we 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 spoke to him the, the other day at the end of mini camp, and he said, "I haven't." Mike comes up to him and says, "I haven't been open like this in years." Uh, and then just speaking to him with the gala, he's like, I'm so excited to be able to play in the slot more, play everywhere. And you yeah. just get the sense all these guys are so energized by your presence um, in the building. And I, and if you don't know that, you should definitely know that. You can feel yeah, the yeah, buzz yeah. in there. You can feel the buzz with the fan base as well. But, you know, yeah, I mean, he's he's running off the side. I haven't been open like this in years. Yeah. And, you, know, you just I look at what this it, offense man. will do to, the, to, to Chris and Mike. You just look no further than what DK and Tyler did last year, right? Yeah, and that and that tandem, you know, that duo up there, it doesn't get any faster or any bigger. Yeah. Um, and with our group, you know, it's like, what is, what's the edge if we're comparing the two? These two guys are absolute dominant pass catchers. They attack right. it. They go yeah. to it. The range, Mike. No one's got range like Mike. Yeah. You know, and uh, to be able to catch the ball on any platform, adjust quickly. You know, and Chris, like, who makes tougher catches than Chris with people all over his back? And right. um, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited about what they bring and to be able to see that come to life too. Well, Coach, we've been excited Thank to have you, you on so the Peter much. Report podcast tonight. Uh, we, we got through the technical issues. You, you delivered like you do <sighs> every day at the Advent Health Training Center for the players. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure covering you already. We're excited to see. Um, I think the fans should be excited to see training camp too oh, yeah. because we, we've got the sneak peek. And you've you've done some stuff with JC and I, Matt Matera. We're we're sitting there going, "Holy smokes!" Just watching some of the formations Amazing. and motions that you guys have. Um, you know, it, it's it's going to be a fun training camp. We're excited to cover you, and and thank you so much for joining us tonight on the Peter Report podcast. Well, Thanks, I appreciate coach. it. I appreciate the encouragement. It means a lot. Um, you guys have have been around and watched the Bucks, so um, hopefully we can just you know do our part to you know, keep this story tradition playing good football, you know, and, um, and so I really, again, thanks for having me on there. And, Absolutely. you know, um, just every time I have conversations like this and I get to hear you guys seeing it, you've watched the Bucks for so long, you know, it just really uh, allows me to kind of see, okay, what am I hearing? What are the things that we're doing well? And what are the things we need to improve upon? You know, and so, yeah. um, you know, I don't mind the fair criticism as well. And sure. Yeah. Um, and I'm ex- and I'm well, excited. Yeah. I'm excited about uh, this season and just the uh, the interactions that we're going to be able to have to yeah. help educate Bucks fans on what they're looking at and what we're trying to get done. Absolutely. Um, you you educate the heck out of us in your press conferences, right. man. And we'll always be honest with yes. you. you know, we're going to give you fair yeah. criticism as well. And uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're excited to cover yeah. your first. We'd love to have you back on, coach, maybe sometime yeah. during training camp before the season starts. Yeah, would love okay. to. Absolutely. Awesome. Coach Canales, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us on the Peter Report podcast. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Wow. That's – Wow. Just that's. (laughs) I mean, see, this is the thing, right? Buccaneer fans, you you get to see the press conferences. And if you watch it on Buccaneers.com and we tweet out some stuff, we have some snippets on on our Peter Reports, you know, podcasts and all of this. But, I mean – it's it's different when you you get to ask questions for thirty minutes rather than have to share the questions with News Channel Eight and ESPN and the Times and and all of that, right? So that was that was some great back and forth there with Coach Canales, and um, he's believable. You know, JC, I think I think that's the thing is 
is um, he th the energy is not fake. It's real. You were talking about the energy. And and uh, if you're not excited about this, there are going to be some bad play calls. There are going to be some underwhelming performances. There is going to be a learning curve. Like, I, I, I get that. But I can see the guy's vision. And you <sighs> hear the the honest to goodness enthusiasm honest. from the players, JC. This guy has literally energized the building. And, uh, you know, I, it, it reminds me a little bit of, of 1996 when Tony Dungy was first hired. Um, he just had this sense of belief about him. And the Buccaneers started off like one in six that year. And and I and I think this team is way more talented. They're not going to be one in six. Don't don't get it twisted. But yeah. But the whole thing was you could see you could see the vision and you can see what he was building. It was only a matter of time, right? And so what happens the next year? Boom, they're 10 and 6. They they're winning a playoff game against the Lions. It didn't take long. And that's the kind of feel I get from from Dave Canales is is it's it's going to take a minute or two to get there, but once you're there, you're going to enjoy being there. Yeah, I mean just the honesty. Um I mean, we ask a question, and he goes into three different things about that. He gives you uh, one of the biggest things, and one of the biggest things with players, he gives you the why. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he tells you what his thinking is. He's not afraid to hide anything. Right. Um, and, and that's that's a confident play caller. Um, that's a confident guy to be able to tell you, hey, this is what we want to do. Yeah. Um, now go stop it. Um, right. I just think the energy that he brings, you can feel it through there, the, the uh, ability to um, – relay his message, relay what he wants, um, what he expects out of his players, um, right. his ability to connect just even with us. I mean, here on a 30 minute podcast, when yeah. we're just firing off questions about football, you know, you can tell that he really loves the game of football. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's so funny. I forget who said it on Twitter, but at eight o'clock Bucks fans will be ready to run through a brick wall. Yeah. Um, I That's think right. if you guys are listening to this podcast and, and you don't feel that way um, for this coach, um, there's something wrong with you, but it, it's the night and day difference from last year. Um, yep. I don't want to dwell on last year a little bit. I sure. know you guys got my question there. <laughs> uh, so I kind of try to keep a straight face, but yeah. you know, um, I, I'm, I'm really excited. And part of the reason why we know, we know Bulls is going to have a good defense. Right. Scott. We, we know that um, yep. he's, he's lost some players, but not enough where I think the defense is going to have a massive drop off. Is there a question marks at players at certain positions, pass rush, nickel cornerback? interior offensive line of course but i think he does enough where he's going to have this defense pretty much in the same spot as last year maybe even better in the secondary um and ready to go but the offense i have a lot of hope even with the yeah. offensive line changes even with the with the who's going to be the quarterback I, I think whoever whoever he picks is going to be the best man for the job and and fantastic question by you and fantastic breakdown by him on who's going to be able to get that job. Yeah. And it was just a lot of great information. It really was. And, and it's always it's always great talking to Dave Canales. I mean, his his press conferences, they're, they're a breath of fresh air, folks. I mean, th this is some detailed stuff that you don't get from every assistant, certainly not from every coordinator. So um, <sighs> we're just as lucky as you are to to ha have the download of information. And golly, if JC, if, <laughs> if the walk is as good as the talk. Oh. You marry this offense, with the conception of it, what it could be, with what Todd Bowles' defense will be, and I think you're going to have a winning record this year in Tampa. Folks, I, I'll go one step forward. I think if that happens, I think you're looking at a, at a team that can make some playoff noise, potentially get past that first round if, if everything comes together like we think. And, and like yeah. you said, there will be hiccups, yep. but I think once they get the ball rolling, I, I think this is a team that can surprise in a very weakened NFC. I agree. Conference. Really appreciate everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, we're going to have sure, some thanks. stories out of this on PeterReport.com. So make sure that you check out PeterReport.com and make sure you follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. That's at Peter Report, as well as our YouTube channel, Peter Report TV. Make sure that you, if you like this interview, make sure you subscribe to the Peter Report podcast. Make sure that you subscribe to Peter Report TV and like our videos. The more likes we get from you guys, the Peter people, well, the more that that puts our videos in front of other Buccaneer fans. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and uh, it helps increase our, our numbers. So we really appreciate that. We're almost 11,000 subscribers. So really appreciate uh, Dave Canales for joining us. He's going to come back again too, which is cool during training camp. So we'll hold him to that and appreciate all the Peter people uh, out there for watching tonight for JC Allen. I'm Scott Reynolds saying we'll see you next week for another edition of,